Oh, shit. Look at that. It's recording. Let's go. All right. Good deal. Let's get it started. Perfect. Taylor, thanks for jumping on. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. All right. My head's cut off because of my bad camera angle, but I got favorite golf course, Tacoa Golf Course. Have you played it yet? Blue I have yet to make it out there. It is still on the to-do list. Uh, I need to I need to stop going over there for business only trips and start making <laughs> some pleasure. Right. I uh I really want you to play it. And here's why I live on a golf course and um half the golf course I live on, half the people, you know, says it's like amazing. The other half is like this is crap. So I don't know what a good golf course is. This is my favorite golf course in the country though, because um it's beautiful. There's never like a weight or a, like you know a line behind you. It's and I, I go like every Father's Day. It's just gorgeous. So I really want your review. I know you're like a Perfect. semi semi professional golfer on the side. So <laughs> yes, um, I, I will definitely check it out and give uh, my my honest take on whether it is quote unquote a good golf course. But it uh, pictures everything. The view looks gorgeous and looks like it'll be a fun track to play when I do get out there. Yeah. Definitely. All right. So we met on Twitter uh, for my audience, uh, on my YouTube channel and email list and everything. Taylor is a short term rental expert. We uh, we kind of got started around the same time just with Twitter and every real estate investing. I started building rentals, you started the Airbnb thing. And uh, I got to admit on Twitter, I was like, man, this guy is super confident because like at the at the time you had like two cabins, but you never like updated anybody like what you were doing, you know? So at this whole time, I just thought you had two cabins. I'm like, this is the most confident two cabin vacation I've ever met, but you don't, I mean, you've got like an empire. How many, what do you have now? Like manage all in managing, owning, partnering. What's your all in number? Yeah. So it's 40 and uh, yeah. you're right. We, we kept things uh, on the DL for a while and um, then did a big reveal and um, there was a lot in the works and, you know, we've got a full team uh, now assembled and, and working with, uh, you know, the team has been fantastic. And it's kind of one of those, I made the decision, um, you know, back in January is do I try to grow this empire solo or do I try and grow with a team? And, you know, yes, you give up some of the equity, but, um, you know, you can make it way bigger and do it way faster with the team than an individual. And that I think was the big alluring thing as well as, you know, it's, I mean, it's fun to do it with, with great people, you know, when you're on your own, it, it can get lonely at times. And, uh, you know, that, uh, that kind of drew me in was the potential upside of doing it with some other people. Yeah. That, that's like probably my number one mistake I think I made and not necessarily a mistake, but just, I could have been a lot bigger because I just, uh, have you read Steve Schwarzman's biography by any chance? I, I have not. Yeah. It's, it's really, it's worth, uh, I did the audio book thing. It's, it's actually worth a, a listen, um, but just out of the gate, he didn't uh, do anything on his own. You know, he just part, got a fee and partnered with people and just, he got a, a, a small percentage and I don't, I don't know your, but it's just like, that's how you're able to grow. Cause you're not constrained by your own capital. So that's, that's awesome. So, uh, your company is superhostlabs.com, correct? Yep. And what do y'all, what all do you do? You own, you manage, you partner, what, what all do you do? Yeah. So, um, we run a short-term rental portfolio. So we, um, you know, we have investors that will invest and we'll buy property, we'll renovate it, design it, furnish it, manage it, and then we'll split the cash flows with investors. So, um, you know, it's a really great opportunity for, you know, our team to, um, scale. Um, it also is good for, you know, our investors who want exposure to the asset class, they want it to be passive. So that's, um, a great thing is that they're not having to deal with any of the check-ins or renovations. Our team handles all of that. And so it's a, it's a good passive cash flow opportunity uh, within the short-term rental space. And then for us, we can build this huge portfolio um, by taking on more and more investors and capital and continuing to cash flow these properties. Okay, great. And um, so I thought the, you know, cause it's like, let's just be honest, there's a ton of short-term rental like stuff stuff out there on YouTube and stuff. And you're, I'm not just saying this because you're kind of my friend and business colleague, but like, uh, I really regard you because you're, uh, 
you're obviously not entry level starter, but you're also not like buying hotels and you know, like like Richard Furte, like buying islands up and you know, doing stuff like that. <laughs> yes. So I think you've got a lot of value to offer. And you said you're good on your feet, so I'm gonna challenge you. I got I, okay. I got two big things on this call that I want to challenge you on. Uh, one, I kind of give you a heads up. I think it'd be super fun to do a teardown of my cabins. You don't have to. Yeah, let's do um, it. it. I do like, I mean, this is going to be super embarrassing because I'm sure I do everything wrong. <laughs> so, uh, and I, I'm not ashamed. I don't claim to be a, a short-term rental, you know, expert or guy. I just, it's, it, it really is. Uh, Richard Fertig did on the uh, Fort podcast. I mean, it really is fun. And I do encourage, like, everybody needs to have a cabin, a something just to learn about it and do it. And um, it, it really is a fun investment. I don't want to build an empire like you're building or anything like that. I don't have any grandiose plans, but it's just kind of fun to have. My wife loves it. Uh, it helps with the taxes. Um, all right, I'm being long-winded here. All right, two things. One, tear down. Second thing, we can do this whatever order you want. So I'm a, just like you're a golf fanatic, I'm a ski fanatic. And um as you know, like, you know, just like everything out West, it's like crazy expensive, you know, like the, uh, I looked, I've looked in Vail a lot, you know, stuff just as like a one, a one cap, you know, or something, if you want to buy in there and the fees. So I just wanted to ask you kind of like, I'll put you on your feet real quick. It's like, what would you do? Are there any ski towns that you've been, you've looked at and you, you think are like decent? I'm not talking like, incredible but just like decent ski towns that would like you could make a little money there uh that's kind of part a part b is like what kind of creative things can i do when i'm looking at a ski town to um there's something creative i can do to kind of make it work a little bit yeah so we'll uh we'll, we'll go we'll go with this uh the second question here first and then i okay. got the listings we'll dissect so Unfortunately, everything West Coast skiing that I've seen, it's just not going to pencil, like you said, a, a one cap or something ridiculous. Yeah. So everything, unfortunately, is East Coast, which we could argue like, hey, West Coast skiing is better. My whole family's from Colorado. That's where we grew up um, yeah. and everything. So I do understand the love for the Colorados, the Utahs, et cetera. So East Coast wise, I mean, the Northeast has some value, whether that's like um, some of the skiing up in the Pocono Mountains. Um, there's definitely some cash flow value up there. Um, you know, some stuff around that New Hampshire, Vermont, um, you know, type of, uh, you know, stuff there, there is. Um, and then a little bit of like the Western North Carolina, um, when we're talking like the Banner Elks, the Boons, um, yep. you know, Mars Hill, um, there's some stuff out there where you can definitely get, uh, um, you know, some decent returns and then still get that personal lifestyle usage, go ski for, you know, two weeks a year, something like that. Um, with it and you know maybe do some hiking in the spring summer when it's you know the snow's melted um, but unfortunately everything west coast that that i've come across the the numbers just don't work uh like you said but east coast th there is still some opportunities out there okay cool um yeah there's a guy it's funny you mentioned east coast there's a guy i was talking to this week uh he actually he lives in whitefish montana but he actually bought a couple places up in, I can't remember the place, but it was in Michigan. I mean, crushing it. Like debt service coverage was like three. I mean, it was just like crushing the cash flow. And that's where it penciled that. And then he got even further because he found some management company that like some guys broke out on their own. They were charging like half the rate. And it was like just, um, they just do really well. So uh, what do you, by the way, what do you think of that? This is like very recent as in a last couple of weeks, my daughter had a friend that moved back to Michigan and they were telling me all the barrier islands up there. I mean, it is gorgeous up there. Have you, have you looked up there? So if you look at all the reports, Michigan is like one of the top quote unquote emerging areas to invest for short-term rentals. We are, I would say we're helicopter circling it right now where, where yeah. there's a lot of different things. And uh, I, I guess I'll, I'll kind of like reveal the, the rumor. So there's a vote on the ballot for this fall to pass a similar law to what happened in Arizona, where the municipalities are not allowed to ban short-term rentals. They can only regulate them. So um, that could significantly change the viability and investability of um, Michigan, especially when you go into some of these awesome lake towns, 
Um, you know, common things that we've seen in, in some of these small towns where you're like, man, I've never heard of this, but people go for the lake and they go for summer is, you know, you'll make a killing for those, those 90 days there, that June, July, August, and then it'll be sparse the rest of the time. But it's a supply constraint issue. There's nowhere to stay. The hotels are very inferior and, and very limited. And you don't even have to have the nicest house. There's people with like drapes from the eighties and green carpet, and they're still printing right. cash. And it's that basic supply and demand model. So um, we're circling. It's just, you know, our comfort level from, you know, more of a fiduciary responsibility is like, okay, make sure regulations and check if the ballot passes, that's going to obviously um, ease our risk tolerance because now we know that we're not going to worry about this little small town banning short-term rentals. So um, yeah, Michigan's on everybody's like up and coming emerging markets list. So um, we're, we're definitely looking at it. Yeah, uh, cool. I, I've never even looked there, but man, if you do the Google searches on like, there's one island that there's no cars allowed and it just looks like a cool place to vacation, you know, just a cool little place, but uh, well, good deal. Well, all right, we did the ski question. So let's, let's do the chair now. Can you Perfect. Share the screen. All right. This is good. All right. Blue Ridge. All right. So um, let's, let's go through the pictures here. Um, so going through the order, when we're looking at the first like handful of photos, which is what's going to draw people in, um, you know, we want to highlight all of the key benefits. So a photo like this, where I see we got a little mountain view here sitting outside. I think this should be a lot closer to the top. The other thing that is working really well is imagine people sitting here. So this is very plain. So it's kind of like filling this with, you know, whether it be drinks or plate settings, something like that. So I think having a photo like that, this I think should be your cover photo without a doubt. Um, you got the hot tub, you got the mountain view. So um, I definitely think order of the photos is a huge, um, you know, thing looking again, this photo would uh, keep it up there in the top 10. So right off the gate, is drop all of those great photos. That one, uh, there's number four. I think this is a great photo as well here on the right. Um, you know, this one to kind of highlight the, um, the uh, kind of showing people the drive and everything up there. Then you can get into the minutia of the living room, the dining room, the setup there. Um, other thing is it's like the best $75 investment is those string lights or market lights around the deck. So I know it's like 25 bucks for a 25 foot strand. I know you'll probably need about three strands here to run yours. They go so well at sunset. And then I even add those like sunset photos to there with the lights turned on. And sure. truly people can imagine themselves sitting there at six, seven, eight o'clock at night huge, you know, huge differentiator. So from the photos perspective, those are some of the key things, um, you know, I would look at when it comes to the actual description. And, and this is something I've like harped on to people before. So humans were lazy and especially from a reading perspective and kind of like, you know, this is really just our opinion personally, where, you know, from our experience, but is it's going to be hard to read this. So what we always yeah. emphasize is bullet points. So we just have one or two opening sentences, like don't hesitate to book this five-star cabin, one of the most popular vacation rentals, boom. Then I would put like heart of ask adventure, um, you know, talk about the game room, the mountain view, hot tub. And it's just little like three to five sentence of like features, amenities, you know, stuff like that, board games, updated bathrooms, and it makes it it's a cleaner read and you're going to get people to stay on your listing more. So I think that would help, um, you know, tremendously when it comes to, you know, that point. Um, so as far as, you know, this listing, those would be the changes from the photos perspective um, and then from the description. So we'll pop on over here to uh, good old Sevierville and Gatlinburg. So it look, looks like a new construction area uh, yep. it appears. Um so similar thing here, you know, obviously this is a great view, um, you know, having the mountains, you want to draw people in with that. Um, trying to see if there's a hot tub on here. Yeah, there's no hot tub. It's, it's on the rest. I know. So I think, I think hot tub is huge. You know, number one, A, it photographs well, but then B, I think what a lot of people don't realize is some people, when they search, they'll have their filters and they check hot tub, yes, hot tub, no. So if you don't have a hot tub, 
I don't care if you have the best listing in the world. And, and even if you're charging a dollar a night to rent, you just don't even show up at all. And, and so that's a huge thing, um, you know, that, that we definitely emphasize in a place like um, the mountains for sure. Um, other thing is just, is the new construction, but it, it gives you that, like, it feels a little plain. So like something we would emphasize is maybe some more like decor that fits in with the cabin feel, um, to make it feel more homey and, you know, fill some of these blank walls per se. So these are good little touches here, but what I noticed was comparing it to your other listing here. This one just, uh, you know, when you're, you go in here, you got nice little things around here and, and it just fills the wall a lot more. So when I was clicking around this listing, this one just felt like it had more going on and it felt like the space was filled. You know, you could even do some bigger stuff here. Um, mm -hmm. We always like the game room signs, um, neon signs go really well, or, or like a little Instagram wall, these little touches here. I think uh, I was looking through this earlier, something in the bathroom. Yeah, like all the nice fixtures, like this is a very filled bathroom. So when you look at this photo and you've got, you know, sign here, very nice lights, they stick out, they're, they're very modern, the picture frame, this, you know, the shelving here, like it's a very filled space rather than this, this is a plain wall, this is plain. And so I think part of the reason too, why this one's probably doing a little bit better versus the other one. And, and I believe these are obviously the same floor plan, the same neighborhood yeah. is this one just looks like it's filled more and it's, you know, more inviting. The other one's almost, you know, a little bare, um, yeah. you know, no pun intended, uh, you know, here for the, for the Smokies, but uh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So those, that's kind of the, the little live critique, you know, here in these listings. So right here, this is the exact idea much cleaner yeah. mountain view, fireplace, game room. Like it's an easier read to, to definitely see no four wheel drive necessary. I know that's a big thing guests look for is, Hey, can I bring my Toyota Camry up here? Um, you know, it's just an easier read, um, you know, on the eyes and, and it makes it a lot uh, better for, you know, consumers from that perspective. Okay. okay. Dude, that's, that's super helpful. That's awesome. Yeah. What's the, yeah. that, what's the, um, What's your, like, and that'd be dope if you don't want to reveal this, but like, what's, what's like your top market that you're most excited about? So I, I think there's a couple things is, are we, are we looking for appreciation upside? Are we looking at just cash flow? Because unfortunately you're, you're going to have to sacrifice one or the other in, in today's right. environment. There's no um, what's amazing upside because you look at like coastal Florida, whether that's the Panhandle, the Gulf side, you know, Tampa, Fort Myers, you look at, you know, East Coast, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm, Jacksonville Beach, Daytona type stuff. You're going to do good. You're not going to do home run returns, but you're going to do good returns, but they're never going to lose value, you know, short of Florida going underwater, you know, you, you're going to be fine. And, and those are going to appreciate, um, you know, as far as that's concerned. If you go look at some of these other, you know, type of places, you you might lose that appreciation upside, but gain some cash flow. So I think it's just kind of finding your niche. And what's really unique about short-term rentals as a whole is not everybody's looking for just the best cash on cash return possible, but it's like, hey, there is a lifestyle component to it. You know, we might be in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, and we have the best cash on cash, but it's like, do I really want to go visit Sheboygan, you know, or, or something like right. that? And, sure. and I've never been to Sheboygan. So I, I hope nobody takes offense to this if you live there, but um, you know, that, that's kind of the thing. So you, you have to balance is how much of the lifestyle play versus, Hey, I'm never going to use this and I'm going to just rent it out. Um, yeah. And that's really is figuring that out. And, and, you know, if you can find the best of both where you can cash flow it, still use it two weeks a year, it's a really awesome, you know, asset class and space to be in, like you said. Yeah. Did you listen to, do you listen to the Moffers Million podcast? I do. I do. Did you listen to that last one, how to launch the Airbnb business with the guy? So the Live Oak Lake guy, see, that's the stuff that like blows my mind. I mean, that look, I mean, it's obviously a boss setup, right? And everything, but it's not near, I mean, it's, it's a freaking hour away from anything. And I don't know. I mean, no, that's just, I would, I don't have the guts to do something like I'm a build, you know, I like to build new, as you know, but I don't, 
I wouldn't have the guts to throw down like that, like an hour from nowhere. But man, obviously he's killing it. There's um, around Nashville. I know that there's some signature A-frame stuff that's pretty, I mean, it's a boss property, good, good view, good, but it's not near anything and they murder it. I mean, they just absolutely murder it. So what, like, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so there's definitely this emerging, you know, people want experiences, people want something different. And because there's now access, you know, Airbnb is granted access to make these things possible where people can even find, hey, this is an hour outside of anything. Um, that's huge. You know, obviously they did a great job, you know, with the property you're talking about in particular and got it promoted on social media then people could find it. And I think that's where the people who are booking this is like, hey, they want to get out of the city and just escape for two, three, four days. They want to, you know, gather around, have an experience. And because some of those are some one and two bedrooms is you could get a group of friends, you know, different couples. And, you know, we can have this little one, we can have this. So everybody still has their private space, you know, around the lake yet, you know, very nice design, uh, very nice product. And, and that's really the great thing about that is, it can still deliver those returns. Um, I do also love the deal from a risk perspective is that, you know, he refied, was able to pull all capital out and then some. Yeah. So, you know, anytime you do that, I think that very much de-risks the deal because uh, your capital's out and you now own this asset. Um, so I, I like it. Um, for sure, it is more risky versus building in a traditional place. So um, you're not wrong in, in your hesitations, but um, I do think there's great opportunity in the purpose-built short-term rental space over the next, you know, five years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, obviously, that's the other thing with skiing. It's like I'd love to be able to ski, you know, thing for all the ski equipment. And um, anyways, it's interesting. What's like, what's your, uh, not on the market side, but and a property side, what's the property that you're most excited about right now? Um, I mean, we've got, uh, we actually are dabbling in some development opportunities. So we're, we're kind of excited to just explore that in particular. Um, yeah. Other thing I think is we've got um, some properties out in Scottsdale with these huge backyards and so I think it's fun as you can let your imaginary run wild with all the amazing things you can do back there because you have the space. So, you know, you have these huge lots that are like third of an acre, you know, type of things. And, um, you know, obviously has a pool It's Scottsdale, Arizona, but there's so much space to do, you know, awesome things with fire pits, miniature golf, everything. Um, you know, shout out to Mark Janey and the inspiration on, on a lot of his stuff. So, you know, we can yeah. definitely build some really cool things. So I think, you know, as far as what we're working on now, um, that's kind of what I'm most excited about is entering into some ground up development for short term rentals, as well as taking some of these current properties that we have, um, you know, under contract and being able to build something really awesome, and really fun with it. Yeah, I didn't understand his model and still really don't 100 percent, but uh until like out the, I just went to the beach a couple weeks ago and my sister-in-law bought a beach house and it's huge. I mean, it's like quadruple the size of like a normal beach house. And while we were there, man, everybody wants to rent it because like people are wanting to get married there. You know, they kind of repositioned it to like a wedding venue. Uh, like it can host, it can hold like 40 something people in the den, you know, like seats. So it's just like, it can, you know, so when you reposition it like a corporate retreat or a wedding venue, it's like you just automatically flip the switch of like people aren't thinking per night rate anymore. They're thinking like, oh, $10,000, 20000 it's not bad at all. So, yeah. I think there's huge upside in, in, you know, experiences, events. I don't know if you saw in Blue Ridge, there was a, a cabin wedding hall just sold for four and a half million. And it had like five cabins on the property plus the wedding venue was like a cabin exterior, but there was no walls. So it was all just like full open. And, right. um, you know, I think it was doing like half a million in revenue. So it's like, man, it's almost like a nine X multiple, you know, for just kind of repositioning and making it a, you know, wedding venue, hospitality, people can stay in these cabins. So, um, uh, right. Not, not saying we might not do that because if we ha if we have a good plot of land to to incorporate where you can do the short term rentals, 
but also mix in like a wedding hall or a community event center to make it a multifaceted space. I think that just gives you unlimited upside from a revenue generating standpoint. Sure, sure. Hey, this has been good. I want to be respectful of your time. Appreciate, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, so this is Taylor, Superhost Labs, and uh, check check his website out. Are you looking for partners? Are you looking to manage? What are you What are you looking for right now? Yeah, I, I mean, obviously, if people want to learn more about investing in short term rentals, you know, check out our website, book a call. You know, we're happy anybody yeah. on our team can can explain. Um, you know, if people need help managing their short-term rentals, that's something we also offer as well is, you know, Hey, we can, um, you know, use our team, use our infrastructure to, you know, help manage. So we do a ton of those different, uh, opportunities for people. Okay. Thanks, man. Have a good one. Uh-huh.